Welcome back to the Cozy Cottage Homestead. Today we're going to do a walkie-talkie on Wednesday. And as y'all can tell, the chickens have been going hog wild, laying eggs. Makes me wonder if spring is going to be early this year. This is from yesterday and today because I didn't make it out here yesterday to get them. And it was dark when I got back with their feed, so I didn't pick up the eggs. So today's topic is going to be talking about, is that a bunch of hogwash? And some of the other hog phrases that people use today. Seems like there is a bunch of hogwash today. So has the world gone hog wild? Uh, I guess that's the easier way of putting things and maybe more of an easier way for people to think about it. There's a lots of different phrases on hogs. Um, living high on the hog. Being hog tied. Road hog. Hog heaven. Hog wash. Um, and on these walkie talkies, sometimes they are more brutally honest. I am the type of person that comes across as that way, um, but I very much so mean very well. It's not intended to, you know, offend anyone or upset anyone. It's just kind of a, to get you to thinking about things. Um, but I was just thinking about, you know, how crazy things are in the world. And if anyone else feels like we're being there's just a bunch of hog wash going on. You know, back in the day, most everybody raised hogs. And the saying goes all the way back to, like, the early 1900s. Because there was, um, I believe it was at a football game, a bunch of farmers called the, a play or something that got misrefereed or whatever, that that was a bunch of hog wash. And then it just kind of stuck. Just like today, we have lots of phrases that just stick. So... Um, made me think about hogwash, and I remember a few times someone told me that I was living high on the hog, and I was thinking to myself, I'm glad it looks that way on the outside because I don't feel like it on the inside, but you know, I guess it's just how we look at things, how we think about things, maybe we just carry ourselves a certain way, even though we may not have a whole lot. We try to take care of what we have and what we do. And, you know, maybe we work a little harder. Maybe that's why it seems like we're living high on the hog. I don't know. I think, to me personally, it's just a lifestyle. Nothing was given to me. Everything was worked hard for to achieve in life. So if it looks like it's high on the hog to you and that I don't live a very frugal life, I would be sad to tell you that you were highly mistaken because the only way I've gotten where I've gotten was by being frugal and figuring things out, thinking things through, praying and asking the Lord if the decisions that I were making were right or not, and relying on Him and however the Holy Spirit leads me. So if it looks like that, then I guess that's that's good. But it's not done or should be said in a sarcastic or ugly way, you know. Like I've gotten that a lot too because I am pretty stern, pretty straightforward. And that's just all that I've ever known. I've never gotten anything just by wiggling my nose and spreading my legs and looking pretty to get things out of life like a lot of people do in the modern world. And I'm not saying that to be ugly or offensive, but we've gotten everything that we've gotten because we've worked hard for it. Mr. Regal, would you get down? So it reminded me of another little story that my dad told me back whenever I was a kid. Um... Him and I used to do a lot of hunting, and hog hunting was one of the things that we did. Um, as many of you know, my dad had lost his leg when I was a very little girl, and I was much of a tomboy, and 
I went hunting with him a whole lot to help him because he walked around in the woods and the swamps in Louisiana on crutches. And I had the honor and was responsible and mature enough, even at a young age, to tote the shotgun behind him. And um, he always walked in front of me, and I always walked in the back in case I fell or something. The gun would be pointing back the other way. So it was all about safety, and it was more than just hunting. Just like they say when you take your kids or yourself fishing, there's more to it than just fishing and just hunting. I um, have some very fond memories. So this one particular story that he told me, and I think they've used it in colleges and documentaries and different things through the years, but it kind of makes me wonder. Um, and I don't really wonder, I know, but I'm only able to say certain things because of all the YouTube standards and rules and laws and regulations. So you'll have to read between the lines. But with keeping this in mind about all of the borders being open around most of the United States. So a bunch of wild hogs running through the woods looking for something to eat and looking around, scrounging, just like these guys are doing. And every day they went out to this certain little meadow and looked for something to eat. Well, one day there was a hog trough out there in the middle of the meadow and the hogs just kept looking around like, okay, this is a hog trough. They know it's a hog trough, but there was nothing in it. So they went on about their business, come back the next day, same thing, nothing was there, came back the third day and there was some corn in there. So of course they cautiously, because they were wild hogs, they weren't pets like these, so they all were like, okay, this is nice, we have some food. So they went ahead and ate the corn. This went on for about a week. The next time they came back, they went in there and they ate and they looked around and there was one hog panel put up and then it kind of you know shot them a little bit and they're like well what's up with this but they were hungry and it was free food so they just continued eating and then the next day there was another panel the next day there was another panel so then they were really starting to get a little worried because they were feeling a little bit cramped and trapped but still they were hungry the food was there it was free so they went on ahead and ate. So the next day, whenever they went there to eat, same thing, there was a chute put in. And one by one, the pigs walked in, a whole mess of pigs, um, and started eating, and nothing happened. So they did that for about a week, and they become very comfortable with it, even though they were not sure about all the, the cattle panels and the chute that was put in. Um, so they just, they kept on doing that for about another week or so. And then the last time they went in there, there was a gate put up. And all the pigs went in, all the pigs started eating, and then whenever they were trying to walk out, uh, they were trapped. So it kind of makes you wonder what's going on from the inside out. All of our borders are open, but then yet lots of people are feeling like they are being hogtied. And this goat is aggravating me to pieces. <laughs> so it makes you wonder, you know, how can so many Americans be feeling trapped with all the things that we're responsible for that we have to do, our things that we're supposed to do as being adults, taking care of our own bills, our own property, or, you know, everything. And then, you know, I don't know, it's just... It, it does make one wonder, you know, like, what's going on? Are we all being hogtied and just not realizing it? I know a lot of people on my channel are not, and they completely get it, and they can read between the lines. But there may be someone that comes across here that just hasn't really thought about it. You know, even with the food that we have, that's what they want to call food. I mean, lots of people aren't able to have a garden, aren't able to have a homestead. Um, and people used to be a little more rugged, a little more rough cut, and they took care of their own family. They didn't wait around for handouts. They didn't wait to see if the government was going to feed them or, you know, they called hogwash because they knew there was more to it than just, 
just a little break here and a little break there or they're going to give you something but they're not going to take nothing back from you it's definitely a cat and mouse game if they give you something they're going to take something back in one way or another and a lot of people don't realize that but that's how it works you have to give a lot and give up a lot just to get a little bit of something and then you're being hogwashed and hogtied into believing that you know you're you're still moving you're still moving forward you're still doing good you're still getting what you need but really they're taking a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more every time and they're doing it in such a slow way that most people don't recognize it and don't realize that that's what's actually happening So, yes, I'm not perfect either. I definitely do not have all the answers, but I know there's lots of people right now that's starting to wake up and starting to realize things. Um, and then there's lots of people. I finally had to delete one comment, the first one I've had to delete on my YouTube channel. And it wasn't an ugly comment. It was just they were challenging me against a product that I made and um there was nothing to talk about there was nothing to debate there was nothing to discuss because my product was nothing like what they were trying to say it was because it was not a product that's for sale on the market it's not usda approved it's not been through no safety test or inspection or nothing like that you know and there's just a lot of people that just just want to debate things that's just not debatable and as an older mature and maturing Christian you know there's just certain things that's just not important and that's one of them there was nothing to debate now if it would have been debatable I would have debated it but it wasn't because it wasn't even what they were saying it was so you just don't waste your time on that kind of stuff because it was just that a bunch of hogwash I've never said my channel was perfect. I've never said it was inspected. It was anything. I'm just simply sharing how I live my frugal life, how I do things that work for me and my family. And if it helps others and they want to try it on their own, then I think that's great, you know. But I was just thinking about all the phrases, you know, going hog wild hog in the road, living high on the hog, a bunch of hogwash. You know, these are a bunch of old words that people used to use that seem to be less offensive. So I think I'm going to start using some of those old words again because there's nothing new under the sun. It is a bunch of hogwash. It does seem like we're being hogtied. Well, hello, Mr. Copper. How are you doing today, Mr. Copper? So just want to... Just wanted to put that out there. I don't want to come across as, you know, offending anyone because I'm not really pointing it at anyone or anybody. We all have our things. We all have things that we deal with. And it just, these videos are just a chance for me to do a walkie-talkie and talk about things and share some information um, you may agree with, you may not agree with. And again, that's the beauty of it. We don't have to all agree. But some people may honestly not know. And maybe they've never thought of it that way. So I just think it's good to share this type of information. I don't share a lot of political information. Um, and if I do, I will talk it in code. I will use different things to describe, like the hog wash. Um, different things like that. I won't use political words, big words. I try to keep it plain and simple, keep it real, keep it genuine, you know, but sometimes you just feel like you need to say something, and we can say things, but we just have to be careful how we say it and how we go about it. So I think that's about it for today. I just want to go over some things for y'all to think about. Um... We've been seeing a bunch of hogwash lately, and it seemed to be rapidly picking up. 
more and more and more every day. Um, and it seems like all we're doing is giving the elites the ammunition that they need to live high on the hog. While others are barely making it through, barely surviving, and we're being fed the leftovers. So my advice to you is don't, don't eat the leftovers. Don't eat what they feed you. Find a way to make it for yourself on your own. And let's definitely get back to the old ways, the way people used to live, where the people used to grow their own food, provide for their own family. Maybe there are some changes a bunch of people need to make. Um, maybe everyone doesn't need to work. Maybe everyone doesn't need a vehicle. Maybe there are ways you can cut back on things to have a more simple but yet very rewarding life without being so tied up into what's going on in the world. We still have to be aware of what's going on. It's very important. I'm not talking about that, you know, not to concern yourself with what's going on in the world. We are a part of the world, so we have to keep up with what's going on in the world. But there are still ways that we can simplify our lives by not getting so wound up and so upset with all the hogwash. We don't have to partake of it. We can sit back and pay attention, take notes, do what we have to do, and find ways to make our life more simpler. So, um, I guess that's about enough for today. I just wanted to get on here and do a little quick walkie-talkie and um, talk about that for a few minutes and hopefully not upset anyone or offend anyone because it's not the intent, nor is any of my videos intended to, to come across that I know more than you or anything like that because I don't. I'm just sharing what's on my heart, what's on my mind, and wherever the Lord leads me to talk about, that's what I talk about, you know, so... Some people get it. Some people understand it. Some people know exactly what I'm talking about. They know how to read between the lines. And that's, I mean, there's always going to be the one, right? There's always going to be one in every crowd that doesn't get it that thinks something crazy or something wrong. But, you know, there are, God did put people on the earth. And I've been told a lot recently that I'm one of those type of people that really makes people want to do better for themselves. But they're also the type of people that are more insecure. They're afraid of what others are going to think. So they want to do things and they want to live better and do different. But they just haven't actually jumped and took that first step. So go ahead and make that first step. Do whatever it is that you love to do that you want to do. Time's ticking away. We may not have tomorrow. So if you want to do something and change your life and live a more simple, happy, comfortable, relaxed, laid-back life in the country, find ways to make that happen. Pray about it, and God will help you with that. So farewell, Homestead family, friends, and neighbors in the Cozy Cottage Homestead.